Okay, so we're going to spend some time uh, talking about just general structure for a particular loan. So really any loan generally within the, you know, the banking industry, life insurance company industry, um, you know, Fannie, Freddie, uh, Bridge, etc. cetera. Um, I'm going to talk about just generally the elements of a loan that you're going to focus on or that we're going to look at um, when we're uh, going in that we can expect. So um, here are a couple of the elements that we'll focus on. And the, the first one is amortization. So almost every loan with the exception of, you know, maybe a bridge loan or maybe it's during construction or something along those lines, every single loan is going to have what's called an amortization. So the amortization really is uh, the length of time they're going to spread the loan amount to be paid back. So if you were buying a residential home, you generally 95% of the time are doing a 30 year amortization. So that is the, how they, that's the length of time they're going to calculate the payments uh, as part of this equation to get to your payment, your debt payment. The next thing that is really important in the commercial side of the world, which is what we're talking about, is um, term. So in residential, like I said, you might do a 30 year amortization. Well, the term is also gonna be 30 years in residential. That's not really the case necessarily in commercial. In many instances, they'll have a shorter term. So what that means is although they amortize the loan payments over 25 years, the actual term might be five, seven, or 10 years. So what that means is that by the time they might balloon the loan in the fifth year. So that means you're gonna have a big balloon payment that's gonna be due in the fifth year. Um, or they might say we're gonna, so that might be the term uh, that you're gonna go to, so five, seven, or 10 years. Now within that term, now a lot of them will say, well, we will actually fix it, fix the rate for a certain period of time. So even though you might have a 10 year term, the bank institution might only fix the rate for five. So let's say they fix it for five years, they'll adjust once, and then they'll fix it for another five years. Or they might fix it for five years and then adjust for the second five years as well. Um, it's possible within that term, so you have amortization, how they do the payments, term, which is how, they, how long the loan's gonna actually go for before it balloons. And then within the term, you're gonna find out, well, is it fixed for the whole term? Or is it floating for the whole term or some hybrid where it's fixed for a period and then floats? So that's when you're talking about the interest rate itself, how long it's going to be fixed or within the term. Um, obviously within that, there's gonna be an interest rate uh, that's gonna be calculated. Um, institutions can range anywhere from just having their own internal rate they come up with uh, all the way to a, um, you know, an index plus a spread. So prime plus, you know, fill in the blank. So it could be prime plus one, prime plus two. It could be the FHLB plus a spread. Um, they're all about the same, meaning that there's an index they use. You just have to find out what that is and they'll tell you. Plus they will add a spread. So they'll say 225 or 250. Well, that's 2.50 over that rate. So let's say the index is three. And they'll say there's a spread of two. Well, that means your all-in rate is 5%. So if they fix it for five years and it's a 10-year term, then you, go, you, you have an index that fixes. And then after the second five years, it'll readjust to the new index plus the spread. So if rates go up, then obviously the index goes up and the rates can go up, the index goes down, the rates can go down. 
So that just kind of gives you an idea of how they would generally calculate interest rates. Some institutions will, um, you know, go off of, you know, a bond market. So they'll be tied to the, you know, the stock market and the bond market. So there's a lot of volatility to that. Um, and I would, I would say that what's normal in, uh, you know, for apartments, for example, amortizations are going to be typically 30 years. For all the other asset types, generally 25 to 20 is a, is a traditional type of amortization. Um, and the interest rates can completely vary depending on the asset class and the asset type. Um, prepayment penalties uh, on every institution will have some sort of prepay, some don't. A prepayment penalty is gonna range anywhere from a, what they call yield maintenance uh, or defeasance, which is just nothing more than a make whole provision. And so people go, what the heck is that? Well, the make whole provision is that if I lend you the money and I give you a 4% interest rate, and let's say that it's a you know, $10 million loan, and in, you know, it's a 10 year term, and I want to be paid off in five years, then um, what they'll do is they will go out into the bond market and they'll say, well, there's five years left. So they'll go look at the five-year treasury market and say, what could I get by replacing that money? And let's say that for the sake of discussion, that's 2%. Then now they were getting 4%, they're now getting 2%. So they're going to lose, right? What they would have made by the gap of 2%. So because it's a make whole provision, what they'll do is they'll calculate the five years left multiplied by the loan amount outstanding and then they'll multiply that by the, the gap so in this case it's two percent and so you can you can find out real fast it can get expensive um, if if the interest rates are higher then then typically borrowers only have a, a small peak in the fund. Um, so that's yield maintenance and defeasance. Those can be real stiff. People will go, why would I do that? Because the interest rates are typically lower. Um, then most of them are just step down pre pays. 54321, 10987654321. So it's just 5% you know, in the first year, 4%, 3%, 2%, et cetera. Uh, and then all the way to none. So there's just have zero. So there's no prepayment penalty at all. Um, so those are kind of general prepays that you'll run into. Fees uh, are going to range. Uh, on most, most loans that you're going to work on, you know, fees are going to range. Uh, you know, if you're doing an SBA loan, you're going to pay a lot more fees. There's, um, you know, SBA fees, it could be 2.5%. You're going to pay for, for loan doc fees, a doc prep fee. Uh, which could be $2,500. Uh, you're going to pay for an appraisal. Uh, you're going to pay for, which is, you know, could range anywhere from $3,500 to $4,500. You're going to pay for a, a property condition assessment report in some instances. You're going to pay for an ALTA survey, uh, ALTA survey. Um, you're going to pay for an environmental phase one report uh, is what, typically people are going to pay. Uh, and then you're going to have origination fee. Obviously, we charge an origination fee. The lender may or may not uh, charge a fee. Sometimes they port it what they call PAR, which is they don't charge any fee and they just pass that on to us. Um, so they'll charge a fee. Uh, we charge a fee. Um, so that's a cost of doing business. Um, sometimes they have a legal fee where they have to engage attorneys to draft loan documents. So they might charge, it can get expensive. That could be you know, 7,000, could be 10,000, depends on the size. Um, and then title, the title is gonna cost, you know, 
three, four, five thousand, depends on where you're at. Um, but those are those are kind of just general fee structure that um, you're going to run into on particular transactions. And remember the you know the types of lenders that uh, we're dealing with in these are going to be again Fannie, Freddie, life insurance companies, banks bridge lenders, um, could be specialty lenders, uh, private or hard money institutions, just local traditional banks. Um, so those are these bucket of capital and each one of them are gonna have their own general terms and structure um, for, again, apartments, office, retail, industrial, multifamily, um, assisted living facilities, um, car washes, self storage, um, the list goes on and on. So this, you know, just kind of gives you a general idea for typical structures, amortization, terms, fixed periods, rates, prepayment penalty that you're really going to see on pretty much almost every loan that you're working on as you're working you know, with integrity capital for uh, procuring some debt. So gives you a little idea for structure for integrity capital.